Amongst all of the news around cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin and Dogecoin, you may have heard NFTs mentioned a few times. And unless you're fluent in the language and acronyms of crypto, you might not fully understand what an NFT is. Not to worry, we've done our research and assembled this beginner's guide for how creators can get started with this exciting blockchain-powered medium. Wondering how NFTs can impact you as a member of the creative community? Let's get into it! NFTs, the basic definition. NFT stands for non-fungible token. That's a fun one. An NFT can be thought of like a collectible sports card or coin, except it exists only in the digital space. But unlike your Charizard Pokemon card, each NFT has unique information tied to it that can identify it. Thanks to the use of blockchain to verify and trace ownership of NFTs, they are also easy to verify. While you may never know if the Charizard you traded for in high school is real or counterfeit, or what year it was opened out of a booster pack, there can be no such trickery when it comes to these digital collectibles. Since each NFT is unique, there can be no direct trading of another copy of that NFT. Just like your driver's license is the exact same chunk of plastic as everyone else's, but only yours has your name and information on it. You can't trade your license with someone else and expect it to work, unlike trading Pokemon cards. The Impact of NFTs If you're just hearing about NFTs right now, you may be surprised to learn that over $350 million US has been spent on them since November 2017. And considering how popular NFTs are right now, that number is probably low compared to what it is by the time you're watching this video. They've been especially useful for gamers, actually, who have been able to get value out of in-game items and real estate. Each of these items is unique, and it's easy to prove that they are the sole owner. It allows gamers to sell in-game cosmetics, collectibles, and in-game currency on the secondary market with a level of security and accountability that just didn't exist in prior years. It also opens up some interesting doors. Guitars that were once used by a famous musician command a high price tag, and the same can happen for an in-game weapon used by a famous World of Warcraft streamer. When it comes to art, this blockchain-powered system lets artists sell their digital artwork directly to buyers without going through a third party. This should all result in more profits on their end because they don't have to spend any fees. The most exciting part is that royalties can be programmed into any digital asset such as art, so the original creator can continue making passive income from their piece, even when someone resells it to someone else. What does it mean to own an NFT? Owning a digital asset like a piece of art or a song gives you similar rights to when you buy that same song on a platform like iTunes. You're not buying the copyright to the digital good, you're just buying a personal copy. You're sort of getting an autographed version of a digital file. So no licensing, using for commercial purposes, reproducing, or publicly displaying. You also have an intrinsic promise from the creator that they won't release more originals. This would decrease the value of the one that you bought. The creator would get a bad name and reputation if they did that, however, so there are good market reasons for a creator to not engage in this kind of behavior. Why do NFTs have value? I've mostly figured out how cryptocurrencies work, but I'll admit it's taken some time for me to wrap my head around NFTs. If you're like me, you may be wondering why a piece of digital art would have value. After all, I can download a JPEG file of a piece of art and set it as my desktop background, just the same as if I bought that piece as an NFT. And I can make a billion copies of that JPEG and send it to all my friends, and no one will have a lacking experience with that image file. If you are wondering that, then don't worry, you're completely correct. An artist can decide how many real pieces they want to exist. These will all be verified by the history data stored in the blockchain. This does not stop a billion JPEG copies from being created, but it does allow the people who care to be able to own the real thing. It's a bit odd for digital goods, we know that owning a copy of a piece of physical art is worse than owning an original, but how many people care when it comes to a digital piece? I grew up during the wild west of digital content. My friends and I would get our music files from strange corners of the internet, so no one I personally know cares about owning an original when there are free or cheap ways to get a non-original. And there's no practical reason to own a real JPEG file when a non-real one will serve the same function. And yet, like most things, the value of NFTs is driven by the market deciding that they have value in the first place. While company stock prices are generally tied to things like profits and future projections, the price of a Magic the Gathering or Pokemon trading card can be astronomically higher than the paper and ink it was printed on, irregardless of its state in the actual card game. And the same can be said for actual physical pieces of art. It's obvious that art is worth more than the paint and the canvas that it uses, and even the time it took the artist, if they charge an hourly rate. It's all about collectability, not practicality.
Like all collectibles and pieces of art, NFTs have value because people decided they have value. They have opened up new markets that didn't exist before, but that are obviously worth existing. The value may exist due to the artist that made it, the bragging rights of owning a unique copy of something, or from pure speculation and hype. If the hype around NFTs continues, many owners of digital goods will be able to resell their items for a nice profit. I think one of the most succinct examples of why NFTs are valuable comes from this short video by Gary V. What do you think a blue check on Instagram is worth to some people right now? What's a clubhouse invite going for? That's an invite to a platform that is virtual. Why did Matt show a little plaque about 100,000 subscribers? Why did Josh know exactly what that plaque meant? He uses the blue verification check mark from sites like Instagram and Twitter as an example. This digital symbol has a lot of value, which is somewhat difficult to describe. Imagine how much money a verification check mark would go for if users could sell them. Up and coming influencers with money to spend would drop a lot of money to have one. NFTs for artists. I mentioned a few examples of NFT art, but it really does work for any kind of artistic expression. Digital artwork is the easiest to understand, as it's comparable to current artwork. The same can be said for NFT music, which has already taken off with projects from Mike Shinoda of Linkin Park and Blau. Owning these digital assets is like owning a physical CD or vinyl record in terms of collectability, and purchasing digital music is certainly nothing new. Artists can get into crypto art pretty easily. There are a multitude of marketplaces including Super Rare and Nifty Gateway that allow artists to add their work, tokenize and authenticate it, then put it out on the market to be bid on. Anything goes, so don't be afraid that you need to adopt some specific style. It takes just minutes to get started on one of these sites and sell your work easier than ever. Buyers are paying not only for the art, but also for digital frames, so that they can display their purchases on physical TV and tablet screens. Environmental Concerns Just because it's digital doesn't mean it has no real-world consequences. NFTs and the blockchain systems behind them are incredibly energy-hungry. Thus, they contribute to a high level of carbon emissions. One artist determined that the amount of electricity consumed to sell the six crypto art pieces they had previously released was higher than the amount of electricity used to power their studio over the two previous years. Even if these numbers aren't completely accurate, it tells a story that is deeply concerning for environmentally conscious artists. At least with the current way crypto art trading works, it's doing more harm than good for the environment, some say. There are some counter-arguments about how the energy is being converted into currency and that mining for gold is also detrimental to the environment. So, it's a nuanced issue, but it's something that all artists should keep in mind if they're considering crypto art. The final verdict. As a digital artist, you should definitely try selling your art as NFTs. At the very least, it's a fun experiment, and it has the potential to be profitable, as you take home royalties on sales in the thousands or even millions of dollars. Digital content has had value for decades at this point, and this blockchain evolution puts a lot more resources and money into the hands of artists and creators while opening up many possibilities for collectors, both wealthy and not wealthy. Is it a bubble? Maybe. It's really too soon to tell. Theoretically, all of these digital assets could be worth nothing tomorrow. But for now, NFTs are strong and have a lot of demand and a solid trajectory forward. Only time will tell, so make sure you start selling your art right now. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like and subscribe and leave a comment down below. And if you're looking for professional LUTs, Lightroom desktop and mobile presets, Premiere Pro templates, and more photo and video education, visit filtergrade.com today.